Hey guys, it's Elena, and for today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you how I cleared my skin with just one product, this product right here. I'm going to be sharing with you my results with this product between 30 days to 60 days, so one and two month results. This particular video is about how I used it and my results. So if you've been following me for a while now, you know that acne and I have a really close relationship. We've just become best friends over the years. I've shared with you in the past one of my really bad breakouts, but this yet has to be the worst breakout I've ever gotten in my whole existence. Early half of 2020 was when my skin was at its peak. It looked the best. Little to no texture, barely any pigmentation. It looked really smooth. It was really smooth. It was super, super clear. You know, there were some blemishes here and there, but I was really like loving where my skin was at at that point. Around August was when my skin began going completely downhill. I started getting a lot of whiteheads, a lot of clogged pores. This was my forehead before, and then a couple months later around August, August, this was my forehead. I didn't exactly know what was causing my breakouts. There were a lot of major changes going on in my life, like my diet, my stress levels. I don't really change up my makeup, but around that time, that's when I started to introduce a lot more products, like new foundation, hair products. I never wore hair products until before the time I was breaking out. I just really believe that stress was the major cause of why I broke out so badly. And you'll see how badly it really broke out. The reason why I believe it was stress that was causing my breakouts or at least that prolonged my breakouts and made it probably worse is that stress alone can really throw off your natural hormone levels like throw them off balance so when the body is stressed it can really drive up stress related hormones called cortisol and this basically triggers your oil gland to produce more oils and then mixing that with any clogged pores the peacnes which are the bacteria that basically causes acne mixing that all together is just a recipe for disaster I especially if you have oily skin and acne prone skin like myself like really I should have just expected a breakout at that point <laughs> stress can really weaken the body by weakening your immune system so it's more susceptible for development of any diseases of any sickness this also leads to inflammation and aging because the body has a harder time protecting and preserving itself so taking acne it can actually make your existing acne worse so even though there's not enough studies that stress equals acne there have been a lot of studies done that support a very strong link between an increased amount of stress equals an increased risk of acne. So despite knowing all of that, I still have that one problem of getting rid of basically the worst acne I've ever had in my life. I know that sounds really dramatic, but it was the worst breakout I've ever 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 faced in my life. I didn't take immediate action because I think subconsciously I wanted it to get a little bit worse so I can kind of see and experiment which products would actually work. After three and a half to about four months of just letting it be and using the generic products, I didn't see any improvements. I actually thought it got worse, which it did. Not that I thought, it did get worse. It hit about four months. This was the worst my skin has ever ever look. Every little square inch of my face had a breakout. There was texture everywhere. It just felt like a really bumpy gravelly road. There was no part of my face that was smooth. It was so bad to the point that my face was extremely discolored, like all shades of red, even the darkest of the darkest red. A lot of my acne was bleeding at that point. A lot of the acne was super deep. They were cystic acne. It wasn't just physically painful, but it was also mentally painful. And you know the feeling of having acne, it definitely holds you back from experiencing your life to its fullest potential. I know what it feels like to just want to hide your face, to not want to go outside and be seen. The first thing that I thought of to try and hit my acne really hard was vitamin A. Retinoids are a family of vitamin A derivatives. They can come in different forms like oral pills, topical creams. Retinoids are one of my favorite skincare ingredients because they're actually one of the most, if not most, proven to actually improve acne, wrinkles, fine lines, and hyperpigmentation, improve your cellular turnover and elasticity, and also stimulate collagen production for a youthful, bouncy glow. So it really does a lot of things. Just like niacinamide has a lot of benefits for your skin, so do retinoids. Retinoid is basically an umbrella term for all the other types of retinoids, like there's retinol, tretinoin, adapalene, isotretinoin. Some of them are over the counter. If you walk in a grocery store, a grocery store, if you walk into a drugstore 
and you walk into the skincare aisle, there's a 10 out of 10 chance you will find a retinol product. But when it comes to retinoids like tretinoin and isotretinoin and adapalene, you're probably not going to find any except this one because this one was just approved by the FDA back in 2016 to be sold over the counter. Retinoic acid is actually what improves your skin. Most retinoids need time to actually convert themselves into retinoic acid, like retinol needs time to convert itself. But retinoids like tretinoin and adapalene don't need as much time to convert into retinoic acid. That's why they're so strong and effective. I really believe in the power of retinoids because it's just proven itself to be a really good skincare ingredient. Not just too many studies out there, many people out there, but most importantly to myself because I actually get to see the results with my own eyes and I will be sharing with you my results. Today we're going to be focusing on one specific retinoid, which is adapalene. Adapalene is primarily used as a topical treatment for acne by helping decrease inflammation and swelling and also giving you that boost of speeding up your cellular turnover. So the product that we're going to talk about today is the Different Gel Adapalene 0.1% Acne Treatment. Different Gel has been around for 20 years and actually was a prescription only medication up until 2016. As for ingredients, this is not really a product that has multiple different kinds of ingredients to help benefit your skin. The main star of this product is the adapalene. The rest are basically just carriers to help spread the adapalene around the skin. It's a very one purpose product to help calm and heal any acne that you have. To also benefit the skin with lightening any hyperpigmentation, overall evening out your skin tone, shortening the lifespan of any existing acne and preventing acne before it actually forms. So this is a very, very beneficial product for those who have acne and those who have acne prone skin. I first started using this every day as recommended. I typically like to follow the recommended use because my skin can handle a lot. Mine really doesn't get irritated. Now, if you're more on the sensitive side or maybe you're just stepping into the world of retinoids and you just don't know if every day sounds like it would be good for your skin, I always say start low and slow. Maybe start using it once a week and then building your usage. I ended up sticking to once a day because my skin actually didn't mind once a day. It didn't get irritated. It didn't get sensitized. There was no irritation or pain whatsoever. It was just doing the regular peeling and flaking. So the peeling, the dryness, and the flakiness, it was really, really intense, but it began to subside between the fourth and the sixth week. I actually just use this right after my moisturizer. Sometimes I actually add my moisturizer and then I will pump out a little bit more and mix it with this product just so I can get a nice even spread. I also try to keep this away from around my eyes and lips. My skin around those areas did not like it. It over dried. It was peeling. It just felt super, super uncomfortable. And so I don't recommend that I just really want to try it like I knew I shouldn't have done that but like I kind of just really wanted to try it but I just wanted to say don't do it from experience this was my skin December 4th 2020 this was the night where I decided it's time to use a vitamin A the next day which is December 5th this was my skin I don't have any products on either one of them one was really oily and greasy and inflamed and bleeding the next morning everything was just at a halt the first week as you see there was a lot of texture texture, redness, and irritation on my skin. That first week, my skin kind of looked like it was progressing. By the second and third week, it began to purge. And this is completely normal. Anything that speeds up your cellular turnover, it's normal for purging to occur. So it gets worse before it gets better. But the difference of my breakouts from when I started to when it was purging was really different. It was almost like a controlled kind of breakout instead of the breakouts that I was having. It was bleeding, it was oily, it was just greasy and there was a lot of fluids coming out of my face. I know that sounded like not very pleasing, but it's true. My skin was still red. The dryness and the flaking and the tightness, they were all getting more intense. Second and third week definitely is a little more intense, especially because I am using this every day. So I'm getting the full effect of everything. My skin at this point is still super, super bumpy. In fact, it's actually more bumpy because it's purging. It looked like it was really, really dry on the surface but it was still greasy and I hated that look that was like the first second and third week were my least favorite weeks of using this it was dry and greasy and flaky at the same time like a film of grease a film of dryness and a film of like I don't know just dead skin and oil so by the fourth week the purging the dryness the flakiness any irritation tightness everything kind of stopped getting worse the end of the fourth week was when everything kind of started to just chill out 
I wasn't getting any more purging. It was just kind of healing from that point on. It was slowly improving, but it felt like it was getting worse and trying to improve at the same time and then the first month. Right in the beginning of the second month, that's when everything really began to heal. So the fifth and the sixth week, the redness was starting to go down. There was still some texture on my skin, not as much. It was less dry, less flaky, and I wasn't feeling the tightness I was feeling anymore. There were still little bumps and visible flakes. By the seventh and the eighth week, the peeling and the flakiness kind of didn't really exist anymore. The pigmentation is lightening. By the eighth week, my skin actually felt super smooth. Like there's still, you know, little bumps and little clogged pores here and there. The improvement was actually incredible. I love how my skin improved with this product. I would say my skin really improved like 80 to 90%. At this point, there's still a lot of hyperpigmentation left. My skin at this point is really soft. I know that some of you guys do wear makeup and you know when your skin is not at its best, maybe you've broken out or maybe you are flaking and you wear foundation, it doesn't hide it. In fact, sometimes it can actually look worse. So within the first month and then the beginning of the second month, I just could not wear any makeup because it would intensify how it looked. By the seventh and eighth week, I was so comfortable enough to wear foundation because I barely had any texture and I barely had any dryness and flaking on my skin. The only thing that I was left with was hyperpigmentation. I don't expect that to go away right away because it does take a long time for my hyperpigmentation to go away. For me, two months for getting rid of that much acne and texture off of my skin, like a texture, literally texture off of my skin within two months is actually very shocking. And for some of you who's thinking two months is too long, with the severity of my breakout, there was nothing that was gonna cure my skin with a week, not even two weeks and probably not even three weeks. I don't expect my deep hyperpigmentation. I'm talking like the ones that were cystic left a mark, like a very dark mark on my skin. I don't expect those to go away until like maybe six months into using this. And that is completely normal. Hyper Pigmentation is the one that takes the longest to heal from your skin. Now my skin feels amazing. Nothing hurts on my skin, which was the goal. Two months for me is literally nothing. I am at my 10 week mark of using it. My skin looks really good at this point. Don't expect it to work right away. After two months of using this, I actually haven't seen a lot of breakouts on my skin. And I do break out often. I don't really break out as badly anymore as I used to. I'd get a lot of cystic acne right here before my... Um, time of the month. This product justified why I love vitamin A so much. Like, thank you for existing. That's it for today's video. Make sure you stay tuned for the next video where I talk about how to actually use this instead of just talking about my experience. I really want to go more in depth about this product and vitamin A in general, how to use it, do's and don'ts since I have been using it for over two months, a lot of tips that you would need to know before getting started. Be sure to click the subscribe button and turn on the post notification bell to be notified when I post that video so you don't miss out. And also give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. If you have any questions for that upcoming video, comment them down below right now so I can actually try and answer your questions. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye!